Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for August 15th, 2020, recorded around 2.55 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a look here at the Eastern Pacific uh, Basin right now, we still have a lot of tropical systems to keep an eye on. First of all, this area of disturbance out here that is likely to go on to develop into a tropical cyclone. We have Tropical Depression 10E, which is barely hanging on. Uh, fairly unfavorable environmental conditions out in this region right now. And we also have uh, 95E over here, Invest 95E. The E stands for Eastern Pacific. This one, again, will be ha we will have to watch this for uh, portions of the Mexican and Central American coastlines as this is likely to become a tropical depression or storm tonight or tomorrow morning while it tracks generally off towards the west-northwest but could bring some impacts such as rainfall uh, to portions of those areas in the Mexican coastline and Central America. So that is something we'll really have to keep an eye on here over the next few days. Now what's causing all of this, and this is from Michael Ventress, uh, he is a PhD a major at uh, Albany, and what we're taking a look here is the Madden Julian oscillation and the velocity potential at 200 millibars in the atmosphere. We've touched on this now for several days, but if you're new to the idea, this red is the sinking air in the atmosphere, and this blue and purple, that's your rising air in the atmosphere. And you notice where most of the activity is right now over the eastern Pacific Basin, that is pretty well correlated to this fairly strong uh, Mount Julian oscillate, uh, oscillation pulse. And the suppression is over the Atlantic Basin, Africa, and the Indian Ocean currently. And as we head throughout time, we head out to the week one forecast. Excuse me. <clears throat> we head out to the week one forecast here. This is by August the 22nd. And you can see <clears throat> what we're looking at here generally is this Mount and Julian oscillation is now going to pass from the Eastern Pacific and then hop its way into the Atlantic Basin and the extrapolated week two forecast here, the, the interpoliated week two forecast that goes out from the 23rd of August to the 29th of August has this Mount and Julian oscillation firmly entrenched in the Atlantic Basin, suppression over uh, the basically over the Western Pacific and over the Eastern Pacific Basin and favorable pattern across the Atlantic, favorable pattern setting up across Africa. It is going to be go time after that. And one of the things that, again, I can we can kind of gauge how, how busy it's going to be is the activity that we're seeing in the Atlantic Basin currently. Right now, this is Tropical Storm Josephine. It is still holding on, expected to weaken into a tropical depression here uh, either by tomorrow or on Monday uh, while coming pretty close to Bermuda. But again, you know, mainly the impacts for Bermuda is probably maybe just going to be some heavy rain maybe get some gusty winds from time to time not by and large not a high impact event at all uh, as this kind of comes through strong upper level winds is going is kind of coming across this area right now you can see pressure of about a thousand eight millibars uh, winds here about 40 knots or 45 miles per hour with gusts up to near 50 moving still west northwest here at about 16 miles per hour and then we got tropical storm kyle with a pressure of about a thousand moving east northeast at about 21 miles per hour and a maximum sustained wind at 45 knots or 50 miles per hour with gusts up to 60 miles per hour or 55 knots this will be a threat maybe to ireland over the next uh, five days or so over the next couple of days as uh, from an extra tropical transition over in this region uh, this basically just kind of cuts off as the last point of tropical origins. This will remain a powerful um, extra tropical cyclone uh, through the North Atlantic Basin and a potentially up into Ireland and the United Kingdom. That is certainly a uh, potential as we go on throughout the next uh, couple of days or so. And that is going to be something we're really going to have to kind of keep an eye on here uh, over the next few days for our friends here up in Ireland and the United Kingdom. And we can see here on the visible satellite floater from the College of DuPage uh, COD Meteorology uh, GOES-16 satellite viewer, a couple of things to point out here. First of all, this is Invest Area 95E here in the Eastern Pacific. You can see fairly good organization 
excuse me, fairly good organization with it currently, and we have a fairly decent area of convection. This is going to try to tighten up pretty quickly, and this is Tropical Storm Josephine out here in the uh, Atlantic Basin here, and you can kind of see how a fairly broad overall structure currently not a lot going on um, deep convection right now off towards the northeast of the center our inferred low level center is roughly in about here and reconnaissance aircraft kind of confirm that it's on the far uh, southwesterly edge of this deep convection that's over here and you can kind of just see the upper level winds kind of just cutting across here the circulation briefly became exposed here before kind of tucking right back in uh, and we can kind of just see that so again right now as it stands josephine is probably on its last leg uh, as a tropical cyclone before finally dissipating uh, out here in the north atlantic basin uh, because of vertical wind shear now, the one thing that it doesn't have to worry about is the sea surface temperatures. And what, look, what we're looking at here is the sea surface temperatures from the CDAS methodology from tropicaltidbits.com. This is the very skin temperatures at the very top of the water. And again, you can really see, I mean, 31 Celsius in the Gulf of Mexico, 30 Celsius in the southwestern Atlantic. Where uh, Josephine is right now, about 29 Celsius, that will be moving into higher uh, water uh, content here over the next couple of days or so. Uh, there is a chance that this might actually try to regenerate out here in the North Atlantic, uh, but you know some models are picking up on that, but most models are generally keeping this as a dissipating cyclone throughout its time and kind of journey through this region. So not really expecting any regeneration chances, but we'll keep an eye on it. In the Eastern Pacific Basin and the Southeast Pacific right now, water temperature is 31 to 30 Celsius, pretty warm. The Caribbean as a whole is very warm. And again, it is only a matter of time now. The clock is basically ticking before something tries to come along and take advantage of something and even these water temperatures out here you know off the carolina coastline are still very warm 28 29 celsius uh, 31 celsius across most of the southwestern atlantic and bahamas the entire gulf of mexico is just stifling warm right now and that's worrisome because if you get something to come into this environment i'm just saying so you know, that's something we'll really have to keep an eye on. What we really need is a very slow moving system in here that really turns up all this water and doesn't strengthen a lot. But that's what we really need in all honesty right now. Now, this is the signature here of Josephine. This is the 850 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. Again, these reds and whites, that's your higher cyclonic spin in the atmosphere. And you can see we have a fairly round but bundled energy here in the atmosphere. This is about 5,000 feet once again. Again, this is north and, and east of the Lesser Antilles here, so no real concerns for those areas. Uh, but again, you can see, though, if we take a look here at the vertical wind shear, uh, this is now firmly entrenched within a pocket of about 30 to 35 knots of vertical wind shear. Then that wind shear is coming out of the southwest and basically blowing there to the northeast, shearing the system apart. And that is only going to get worse and worse as time goes on. Again, all of it right now, that shear is caused by the uh, an insane amount of convection and the convective response over there in the eastern Pacific Basin from that Madden Julian oscillation. So, that being said, really not expecting anything, but you do notice that there is a pocket of a little bit less vertical wind shear up in this region. So, if it does manage to hold together at least somewhat and moves into this area of decreasing shear, it might try to reorganize up in this region. Uh, but at this point in time, it'd be turning well away from land at this point. None of the model guidance anymore uh, suggests it's kind of doing a loop de loop and, you know, doing whatever. All of the model guidance basically now is 
uh, off towards the northeast and away from any land masses. So we're not really expecting this to be any significant land concern as time goes on. Another tropical wave down here on a pretty decent pocket of shear and another one kind of down here. We'll have to watch some of these over the next few days or so as the Mount and Julian Oscillation kind of passes over. And what we're looking at here, you know, kind of another way to visualize everything. This is the European forecast model, the 850 millibar vorticity. And again, we just kind of go through time here and you see a fairly decent, you know, not a decent, but a signature there in the uh, in, this, in the model. It's picking up a tropical wave that's a closed isobar down there. I mean, it's not the healthiest signature I've seen, certainly, but, you know, this is the August 21st time frame, you know, a couple of days from now, it's beyond five days, but it's worth looking at. And we just kind of run the model out here. Another tropical wave. Yeah, this is 240 hours out. The bottom line is that the pattern is going to start being conducive for tropical cyclone development in the Atlantic Basin as time goes on. And this isn't to scare anyone or hype, but we want you to be prepared. I want you to be prepared. And that's what I'm focused on, preparedness. So, again, it does not hurt right now to, you know, focus on, okay, you know, your hurricane preparedness plans if you need them. And, you know, just in general, just get ready for the the bulk of the season because it's it's coming and certainly seeing these two tropical uh, storms right now in the Atlantic Basin under a unfavorable environment it just goes to show you so we have something to watch and we can see that here in, a, in another way this is basically looking at all the way out at the six to ten day time frame and this is the normalized um, mean sea level pressure anomalies and your reds that's your higher of uh, that's your higher pressure anomalies and your blues correspond to a lower pressure anomaly and you can see all throughout here this is by the uh, 240 hour time frame six to ten days from now that we are going to be looking at lower than normal anomalies, pressure anomalies all throughout this region, which has been pretty consistent throughout this year. You can see fairly significant lowering all the way down here. That is in response to this Mount Julian Oscillation. Now you begin to see the rising air or the, the more stable air across the East Pacific rising over the Atlantic Basin, and it is going to be go time soon enough. So again... It's almost time, and, you know, we just are kind of in a watch phase right now, all right? You know, the, the pot is boiling, per se, but once you take that lid off, it is going to be something we really have to watch. And, you know, where the storms go, how strong they'll be, I don't know that answer, nor does anyone else, and I wish I did. But the bottom line, you have to be prepared. The peak of the season's coming up anyway, September 10th. So we need to watch and we will have stuff to talk about. So with that being said, I know this was a little bit shorter and I want to leave you today with a animation I did on Hurricane Isaias as it uh, became a hurricane through weakening in the um, basically through Florida and the making landfall in North Carolina. I'll leave you with that. But otherwise not, hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. I am Michael Romali, and I will talk to you guys then tomorrow afternoon. Stay safe, everyone. Hope you have a great rest of your Saturday.